So with this example, with Aspen Plus, we're going to take a look at absorption and stripping columns. What we have is a stream that has methane, ethane, uh, propane, isobutane, and butane, and pentane, and isopentane. And we're going to use our uh, paraffin oil as the adsorbent. Um, and uh, we want to have roughly a 2 to 1 ratio, so we're going to have 3,000 kilomoles per hour of our paraffin oil and 1,500 uh, kilomoles per hour of our um, gas stream. So in order to get started, we're going to add our components. Now, regardless of you know, whether you know it's methane, I always use the find function. So we'll just say is equal to methane, and we'll add all of our components. Now, paraffin oil does not really show up, so we can use something like uh, n dodecene um, to. Uh, or sorry. <coughs> now, paraffin oil doesn't show up in our uh, data banks, so what we can do is we can use a surrogate. So we're going to use uh, n uh, dodecane uh, in order to approximate the paraffin oil. So now we have all of our components. We're good. Let's check out our thermodynamic package. We'll go ahead and use our methods assistant just for uh, sake of completeness. We're going to specify our component system. Definitely have a hydrocarbon system. Uh, we don't really have S, uh, assays or pseudo components. So Ping Robinson looks like a good choice. And that's what, uh, that's what we're going to use. So we're good to go. And just going to have it run through its um, uh, analysis and setup, making sure that all of our interaction parameters are okay with each other and we're good. So we'll head into our simulation. Now, with the simulation absorption and stripping, you actually utify, utilize the uh, RADFRAC uh, columns. So if we click on our uh, drop down arrow there, we have all of these other ones. And if you hover over, say, you know, we have uh, absorber 1, absorber 2, and of course absorber 3. Now if you notice up here we also have a uh, stripper 2 and uh, stripper 1. doesn't really matter, but for an absorption column we don't have a condenser and we don't have a reboiler. So I'm just going to pick absorber 1 for the absorber. And uh, for our uh, stripper we actually do have a reboiler set up. We don't really have a condenser, we just have the gas that's going to be exiting. So now we have our stripper there, modeled as radfrac columns, but they are specific cases or specific columns uh, that are an absorber and a uh, stripper. So we just name those really quick, don't get them confused. Now for our materials, uh, we have a um, course uh, a feed stream which is our uh, hydrocarbon stream. We have uh, a vapor outlet for our absorber, a uh, vapor outlet for our stripper. We have the regenerated solvent that is coming out of our uh, stripper bottoms column, or the bottoms part of our stripper column, and uh, we are feeding that uh, liquid with our uh, adsorbents to our stripper column. Now, the one thing we don't have is our actual solvent, which is being fed to the absorber. Now, Aspen is a little weird in that this is the difference between a process flow diagram and a process simulation diagram. These um, look like they're going in the same location, but within Aspen uh, um, models over here, 
we specify that it's actually not going in the same column or the same tray. So I'm going to go ahead and name these. Don't confuse them. We have our feed. We have our uh, msorber out, our stripper out, our absorbent liquid, and our uh, stripper bottoms, or our regenerated solvent, and our solvent. Clean this up a little bit. So now we're ready to add in our uh, our feeds. So uh, we're going to specify that, say, we have uh, 32 degrees C, um, 510 kilopascals, uh, and I, I believe we said 1,500 kilomoles per hour. And we're going to change it and have a mole fraction, in this case of 83% um, uh, methane, so 0.83 mole frac. Uh, 0.084 ethane, 0.048 propane, 0 0.009 isobutane, uh, n-butane is going to be 0 0.017, and n-pentane 0 0.008, and 0 0.004 for our isopentane. Uh, so you can see we summed to one, so we're good to go on our feed. Now our solvent um, again, it's paraffin oil, we're approximating as N uh, dodecane, and that is going to be one, let's change the mole fraction, don't want to mess this one up. We said a 2 to 1 ratio, so 3,000 kilomoles per hour. We'll feed it at the same condition, 32C and 510 kilopascals. So our strings are good to go. Now let's check out our absorber unit. So with an absorber unit, again, you don't have a condenser, you don't have a reboiler, you just have trays. So we're going to have no condenser, no reboiler. Uh, we want to stick with our equilibrium, just let our interaction parameters, let our thermal package do what it's going to do. We can also define our rates if we have them. Well, we don't, so we're just going to keep it as equilibrium. And now our number of stages is 30. Our streams here, we have two feed streams. Uh, for our uh, feed and our solvent, we're going to feed them onto the stage. In this case, our liquid is going to be raining down from the top, so we are feeding it on stage one. And our feed, our gas, is going to be bubbling up, so we're going to feed it on our last stage, in this case, 30. So our streams look good. Our pressure. So we're going to say we have a little pressure drop, say uh, 0.015 megapascals, uh, or 15 kilopascals for the entire column. So our top would be 0.495, somewhere around there, just considering the fact that there is a pressure drop. Um, oh wait, let's make that 400, whoops, 495 kilopascals, keep everything in the same units. Now we could specify per stage um, or for the rest of the column, we're just going to specify the outlet, uh, or sorry, the, uh, the the top stage. And none. So there we go. We don't have to uh, include operating specifications because we don't have a reboiler and we don't have a condenser. So we're good to go here. Just from a from kind of a first glance. So now we have our stripping column. We're going to again keep it as equilibrium. Now we don't need 30 stages, let's say we have uh, six stages here. Uh, we do not have a condenser, but we do have a reboiler. So we're just going to keep it as a kettle uh, reboiler. And let's say that we want, um, I don't know, 230 uh, kilomoles an hour of distillate coming out. So we specify one, so the other one goes away, our degrees of freedom uh, takes over. And now we have our uh, absorbent liquid. And that is going to um, be fed at the top, and so we want it on stage number one. Again, it is going to be uh, cascading down so that our, our gases will leave and our liquid will, will flow out. So we need that to contact every single stage. So our pressure, let's just do the same thing of 495 kilopascals. 
so we'll have a slight pressure drop and we have all blue check marks so hopefully we're good to go now if we run this we will get some errors and we can see that the um, stripper column here um, dried up and the uh, absorption column also dried up now this is likely due to the fact that um, our convergence is standard now we have a hydrocarbon system so we can say you know that's more likely uh, petroleum we have wide boiling ranges for our system so I'm going to go ahead and reset the simulation just show the importance of this convergence method so we get rid of all of our values from before I'm just going to switch over to petroleum run this and now we have a solution but is it a good solution let's check out all of our streams so here we have um, our feed and our solvent feed. You can see that those are at our uh, you know, units that we put in. Um, our uh, absorption liquid and our absorption uh, gas um, temperatures are about what we have going in. That's kind of to be expected. Now, out of the stripper column, because there's a reboiler, we would expect higher temperatures, which we definitely see here. The bottom is at 290 to uh, Celsius, and the gas going out is at 56. But let's check our mole fractions just to be sure. So here we can see that our feed and our uh, solvents um, match up with what we put in. Now, the liquid uh, coming out uh, is good that it's pretty devoid of our lighter uh, hydrocarbons, uh, methane, ethane, propane. Um, and we have quite a bit of our um, paraffin oil surrogate coming out. And we have almost none of it coming out of the uh, gas phase, or in the, in the gas phase, uh, out of the top of the absorption unit. What we can see is that out of the bottoms over here, we have pretty much our uh, regenerated uh, solvent. So ST bottom, again, is here so we have our regenerated system and the uh, exit here or the, the sorry the uh, vapor phase uh, the stripper out we have the rest of our hydrocarbons that were carried over in the solvent so that is how you basically go about solving an absorption unit uh, and a stripper unit you treat them as rad fracks but you modify the uh, the auxiliary units no condenser, no reboiler for an absorption unit, and you have uh, just a reboiler on your stripper. Now, we can also just take a quick look at our profiles. So the absorption, just go ahead and plot temperature versus our stages. So we can see that you know, it doesn't range much, you know, it's just a few degrees. Um, but if we want to go take a look at our uh, compositions, we can, let's just do it all, because we can. And um, here we have our liquid and our uh, vapor flow rates. For the stripper profiles, let's go ahead and, and actually let's take a look at temperature. This will be more interesting because we have a reboiler. So you can see it certainly uh, increases as you go uh, down the column to stage number six. And you also have uh, quite that change in composition. Yeah, well, let's take a look at liquid. Um, so here we see our uh, paraffin uh, wax, and there's almost nothing in our uh, stage six as far as our mole fraction goes. So uh, that's it for the adsorption stripping or absorption uh, stripping example.